Iolanta has been on my radar for, I mean, before the pandemic, so three plus years. We're sitting in the Aritani right now, and there's just a lot of parallels to the butterfly project that we did here, where we wanted to take a story and tell it in a way that hasn't been told before, or in a deeper way than it's been told. So when I met Christina Jones in, in an audition in 2018, I believe, uh, I kind of filed her away as someone I really wanted to work with in the future. Then Isaac Celia, our conductor for this project, his company in Cincinnati, did uh, this opera, and uh, I was following that on social media. He loves this opera. I saw the Met Live in HD production of this, I think it was like 2015 or 2016, and it blew me away, and it inspired me to learn Russian and to hunt down the musical materials for this because they're really hard to find outside of Russia, then to mount it at my company in, in Cincinnati. And it just hit me so hard. I was like, this is such a special piece. I just have to do this. And this is now my favorite opera. Then, of course, has a, a great role for Christina Jones. We see Yolanta all the time with where a soprano pretends to be blind for 99% of the show. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had an actual blind soprano who doesn't have to act like she's blind, she is blind. Playing a new character like Yolanta has definitely been different for me because I have spent most of my career wiping blindness out of my characters. <laughs> so this is really strange just because I have to, not blind it up, but I, I definitely have to, you know, I don't have to be self-conscious about moving like a blind person on stage. Like I, I don't have to be self-conscious about running into a piece of the set or something, which is, which is weird because I'm used to that being like, don't do that, Christina. So. <laughs> and how has directing this show been different for you? Uh, really different because, you know, even as I'm talking to the camera, I use my hands. Even now, after two weeks of working with Christina, I catch myself still like showing things to her rather than explaining things to her. Um, and uh, so it's just a whole different process. Uh, is even starting with like, well, here's the set design. Can't show you the set design. Uh, so I have to explain, explain it. And uh, then we tried to simulate as much as we could in rehearsal of steps and boundaries and textures and all these different things, but you can only do so much. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes behind you and puts his hands on your shoulders at some point, mm -hmm. and now he's got you in the right direction. Yep, you're gonna make it. Does that work? Yeah, that's, that's it. You're right at the corner. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's gonna so look like that. Right. Just saying. That's there's fine. gonna be some. There's gonna you're be fine. some really graceful swatting. It's in every facet of like you know, starting to block the show and thinking, okay, how, how when we're on stage, the 60 foot wide stage, is she going to make it from point A to point B? And what guides can I give for her? And when, when does it make sense to have a character actually help her get to a place, um, but not do that all the time? It's, it was certainly something I was curious about, like how it would work, what, what, um, things that we would have to be able to do to help Christina get around the stage um, if we had to. But if we're gonna do that, we wanna get a little space, so could you walk her yep. as you take her hand yep. there, bring her center a little bit? Christina, you would have no idea that she has a, a sight impairment because she just sings so well. I view my, my role as a conductor as very much like a, a support kind of leadership that like to get people to do their best and it's just been a reminder to always expand my my repertoire of things that people can need and things that I might need to ask for that I might need to provide to people. <laughs> Rotate the piano. Okay. You guys 
Yeah, yeah since everyone's over there, that might be better. Or is it? Oh, I think it might do? be stuck. Oh, well, they have the sliders. Uh, should we move this one? By the way, you can just slide it off. Should we give it a try? See what happens. Oh, those legs. Those legs. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. More in the general direction. Uh, have been so so great oh my god like and I'm, she's told me in some of her coaching she's like she relies on them this cast has been incredible everyone has been so patient and supportive and just really really lovely to work with and everyone's had a good sense of humor about everything and you know i i really really appreciate it in any in any production people rely on one another but especially now they really need to be to be on top of their stuff for her sake she, she's been so good at telling us what she needs, and I think that has really made the whole process go smoothly. No one's been too nervous about like, oh, what do we do? She's blind, I don't know what to do with her. So, you know, so no one's been, uh, and you know, if they felt it, they haven't voiced it. <laughs> that, I think they know that they have like an, an extra responsibility to be totally on top of things and totally solid because there are certain cues that she she needs to hear to get situated and it's a lot easier for her to hear them than it is to hear the orchestra acoustically. We've done it so, I mean, they've worked, Isaac and Christina have worked together so many hours in the last two weeks. Oh God, we've spent so many hours on this. So she has the text in Braille and we'll, we'll get situated by finding the text and then she is adding to a document in Braille place markers of like, oh, we're gonna call this measure number 90, because that's like bar 90 in the score, and musical indications and reminders of like, oh, you know, make sure to like not slow down here and make sure to like get this vowel right here. And then I think she has a separate document where she's also keeping the text with staging indications. So she's like the record keeper there of, of like the text plus all the information she's adding to it. I'm sorry. It was not that. I mean, it was too exciting. Were you yelling? I'm not doing anything. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>
the the part of the opera that really really got me was the the famous duet where Baudemont finds out that Yolande is blind because he's like, can I have a red rose? And she's like, what does red mean? And the music that follows that is the best attempt to forge some kind of genuine human connection where he explains the way that he experiences the world. Like, here's what light is. Here's how I experience it. Because no one in the opera has been honest with her before that. And then she counters with like, well, that, that's great, but like, here's how I experience the world. And it sounds like I don't need that thing that you're experiencing. So I've heard people throw around the term differently abled as kind of like a euphemism that's sometimes used for people who are, are disabled. And so far, this, this has given me a perspective that it's okay to acknowledge that some people have disabilities, that, they're, they don't, that they have a handicap, and they have to work harder in other ways to, to compensate for that to get to the same place. I have learned that really there, there shouldn't be any, any walls or boundaries for disabled performers because Christina, it's really amazing what she does. But I also think this could be a reminder to really push the boundaries of what kind of singers we have on stage. That people who still can get to that top level with an accommodation or through a, a different channel can still get there. And that expands the, the number of stories we can tell on stage and the number of, of literal voices that can be there. I mean, there's been a lot of fun, fun memories of Christine is very funny. First time I have seen her in since, you know, in person since audition in 2018. Um, I picked her up at her host house and she said, I'll be the blind girl with the dog. So I picked her up and I said, oh, and she was all dressed up for the first day. And I said, you, you look great. And she said, so do you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we're going to be, we're going to be fine <laughs> from here on out. 